This video isn't a tutorial like usual, it's a quick discussion about animating complex characters in Godot and a few of the improvements and limitations with the animation system in Godot 3.1. So I've posted about that on Twitter, the fact that we are now nearing completion of the Godot 3.1 new features tutorial series and I was working on the animation ones, an intro to the new animation editor but also I wanted to cover uh, rigging, skinning, some mesh deformation, which I've done with Andreas Ezo's uh, GoBot. So deformation, uh, rigging, which is when you take various body parts, you create a polygon and you then bind them to bones, bind vertices to bones, which allows you to then rotate the hand etc. The skinning is not amazing but I'm going to touch on that because there are some limitations or the, the workflow isn't ideal when it comes to creating and editing these polygons. I started working on a walk cycle animation tutorial but the thing is there are limitations that make it quite tedious to do and so that I can't really recommend working with that for characters. Once again, the animation system is really good for all the gameplay environment related animations, the ability to add sounds, etc. right now. The issues come when you have lots of limbs to move. Here are a few of the issues I have. One is you don't have a constrained system. In animation, there are cases where, for example, I would like some of the bones to not be able to move. Maybe you don't want this one to be able to move and detach from the character inadvertently when you select and move the stylus in my case, which tends to mess up the character a little bit. The day we have an auto key feature, this would be nice to not have that. Uh, and you have the same thing, for example, with the hip, you may not want to allow moving it on the x-axis. You would want constraints like uh, an IK for the hip so that I can rotate it. And instead of rotating the entire character, I would like it. I would like to be able to set it up so that I can just rotate the hip without moving the rest of the character. Same thing, the back. I don't want to be able to move the back inadvertently. I should only be able to rotate it. And although I could set up the back probably as an inverse kinematic, as an IK chain, there you go. Yeah, it can still move because it's the base of the chain. Then a few other things, so there are quite a few features missing that make it harder than it could be to make the character. Or these might be bugs, but for example, when you have a skeleton 2D, you can't make it partially visible using the modulate color uh, property on canvas item. Also, when you hide the skeleton, you can't insert keys anymore. Let me show you that. So if I try to insert a key on the hip, I'm going to filter this down, click insert key. You will see that because the hip is hidden, it doesn't work. It doesn't insert a new keyframe there. So I can't work on the character with part of the rig hidden. For example, just the arms, so I can work on the legs. I would like to hide, for example, the arms and the torso at this point. Where is it? Chest. There we go. And to animate the legs on the character. But when I do so, so I do have my keyframe set up for all the limbs as you can see, the thing is, I would really like when I'm working to be able to key everything because when you are creating the main poses for an animation, you really want to have keys everywhere so you don't have unwanted transitions between the various keyframes. Let me show you that if I remove the keys on the forearm and the hand. Imagine that I went straight to create this pause. What you will see is you get some animation on the arms and the hand. You get uh, some transitions, procedural ones calculated by Godot. And when you are 
creating the blocking of an animation, you don't want that to happen. You want to have full control over your pauses. The rule of thumb is to key every single channel, every single bone in your rig. In most animation programs, you can set them up so they do that uh, automatically. You can key everything in a keying set in Blender, for example. Next up is full timing. So I have a base walk animation. I just have the first half. Let me set it so it lasts only one second. There you go, only the first step. <laughs> and I abandoned at that point. When you're working on something like a walk, you might want to change the timing of the main poses. So I might want to shift this keyframe here to the right a little bit. The problem is I don't have a master key like I would have in Blender to just shift all the keys on the individual bones in time, forward in time. This is something you have in this kind of view that's called a dope sheet in most 3D packages and 2D animation programs. And it's really important to work with the master timing of your animation. So that's one limitation. The next thing is so there's no auto key, meaning that if I make a change to anything, so say I want the, the leg to be higher up, if I don't press insert, I go back, the change is lost. I'm going to make it a bit more extreme so you can see. I go in time, or I can even re-click on the frame. It will reset the pause of the character. So you always have to insert a key or insert a key using all the existing tracks. You have options to insert keys and insert keys on existing tracks, but it only works with selected nodes. And when you have a long list of bones like that, having to, if you want to key them all vertically, which you want to do when you are blocking an animation, you have to go back and select them all every single time. And if you move an arm, for example, like so, and you move other limbs on the character. If you don't select all the limbs and you try to key at this point, the change will not be taken in account. We should have some kind of option to really key all the existing tracks on all the animated nodes or bones, even if they are not selected, because otherwise it's too, too much of a pain to work with. So that's part of the things that made me uh, give up with this one. I was thinking if I show you in a tutorial to do that, it's so tedious and I should say it's frustrating to lose your pause every few minutes or having every time you move a bone to press insert or having to go back to the scene tree, select everything, make sure that you press control insert to insert keys on every existing channel. Going back to visibility, when you are working with Blender, you can turn some bones into controllers and hide the rest of the armature. And here, for example, the chest, the connections, I get three connection points in there that I don't need to see at all. I would just like to have a simple shape here on the skeleton, for example, like so. So I could have a, a circle on the hands and maybe a pole on the elbows, although you don't really need them in 2D. I could have something like that on the torso and the hip to say these are rotation nodes. Uh, I could do it this way. could have a, a cross or a cube to say I can move the hands. These are using IK like so. And I could have circles to say I have controllers here that only rotate the corresponding bones. And with a good working IK, you don't want to be selecting the legs, the individual limbs. Most 3D rigs come with only the controllers that you need to worry about as the animator, and the armature is generally hidden from you. That would be nice to have. It's possible to do something like that as a plugin, but one of the issues is the fact that we can't key the bones if they are hidden at the moment. So we couldn't really hide them. The last thing we're going to talk about is the graph editor. I'm going to take 
a single note here, the leg, for example, the foot, allow me to hide the chest here, and create a new Bezier curve track for, so I have to go back <laughs> to uh, the foot, was it the right one? Yeah, it should be the right one. Create one for the position, and it's going to create two tracks that have this graph editor icon here, the edit Bezier curve there. So Bezier curves are extremely common to animate characters. And the thing is, at the moment, the graph editor is a pain to use. So first, there's no snapping. There's absolutely no time snapping in there. So you can't follow the same rhythm as your animation once you are in the graph editor. There's no easy way to zoom in and out. I don't know how to do it vertically at the moment. And one important limitation is that I can only have one curve visible at the time while you really animate position in relationship to one another. And it's very common to use graph editors to batch select keys, values, and offset them in time. If I was doing something like that. So I don't want to move it too much on the x-axis here, but uh, let's take the, the y position. When you create keys, for example, on some bones, so this is obviously a bug, but you get bugs with the skeleton 2D. There are things like you can only have really one mode for the handles active at a time, which you use you use these handles to control the transition between two keyframes and having full control over that is extremely important. And the thing is, as soon as you change the symmetry mode, if you want, on the tangents and you click on something, it updates both sides of the tangents. And sometimes you want to do, for example, if you're doing a bounce animation, you're going to want a V shape if you are making a ball bouncing a few times. You'll want to have some V shaped keyframe like so and tangent. If you change it to balanced or mirror to work a little bit on one like that, on one of the top um, of the curves, and you click inadvertently on a shape that was using three handles, it will reset its handles to be mirrored. All sorts of small details like these are getting in the way of just animating. Don't get me wrong there, though it's a lot better. There's been huge improvement in this version and considering how much activity there is on GitHub and people looking to work more on it, I'm pretty sure that it will keep improving with every version. But at the moment, if you don't see a tutorial about animating a complex character on our channel and as part of this tutorial series we are making, that is due to the reasons I just outlined and probably a few more that I forgot. But for now, I think that's it. That's fine. Well, I've had a bug as well where I had some track on one of the nodes and when I was trying to insert uh, into the position, it created a new Bezier curve track, but I haven't been able to reproduce it as well. Now, even though I said there's no snapping in the graph editor, you can snap your keyframes after creating them to time steps by going back to the dope sheet, which is this view, the, the keyframe editor, if you want. But it's a little tedious to do so, and it makes it harder to preview and work with your animation. Oh, I was going to touch a bit on skinning. I just want to talk about some of the issues with the editor at the moment. The main one is you have to create each of the polygons you see here you have to create them by hand. So obviously this is very slow compared to complete 3D application, which would allow you to split faces, to do complex transformations. And also, once you've created your polygons, you can't add points to the shape in there. You can add inner vertices, but inner vertices 
uh, only for the inside of the rig. And if you were to try and add polygons in the view, it's not possible at the moment, maybe because it's bound to a skeleton. But here you have limitations in terms of flexibility and creating the polygons to create the mesh deformation on the character can take quite a bit of time. On top of that, if you want really good results, depending on the type of mesh that you have, you want more subdivisions around the joints to avoid an effect that you have on the arm. If I zoom in, you can really see that there are just three vertices around the texture deforming the mesh. And so you, you would really want to subdivide it a little more to not see these sharp transitions, these sharp lines, which is a pain to do when you have to draw every vertex one by one. But that is it for now. It's not really a rant. You will see that we are going to release a tutorial about creating this rig, this character rig, setting up the armature, the skeleton, and setting up the individual polygons. It's coming to the channel. In summary, the new animation editor is pretty amazing, but it still needs some work to do character animation, to do complex animations. That said, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. Let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.